second half of the NFL season is here, and those young QBs are putting on a show. But who's the best team? This is when we separate the pretenders from the contenders. And you can follow that story every Sunday with the NFL on CBS. You spent the entirety of your career in Philadelphia, something so rare now to have a guy be with one franchise. What about Coach Peterson, Howie, Jeffrey Lurie? Explain your relationship with the three most important people in the building and what you love so much about Philly. First of all, Philly is the best city to play for. They're so passionate. When you're winning football games, there is no better city to play in. Each and every Sunday, how the following week is gonna go for the people of Philadelphia is gonna be based on whether we win <laughs> or lose. Yeah. If we win, it's gonna be a great week. If we lose, their following week is not gonna be great. I think that's why I love playing here. People love the game of football here. People are so passionate and they're and they're very protective of their own. I'm their guy. They're very protective of me. They want to see me do extremely well. They want to see me catch the ball, get open each and every Sunday. Doug, Howie, Mr. Larry, the kind of culture they've instilled in Philadelphia is a culture that has been built on hardworking players. You look at some of the guys that have kind of been here for a long time, Lane, Fletch, myself, Kelsey, all these guys go out there and bust their butt each and every practice. And I think so the culture, the priority has been set on guys being willing to go out there each and every week, no matter how terrible you feel on a Wednesday, going out there and practice and busting your butt. And really that sets the tempo for the rest of the team. And you're only gonna get better at football by playing football and practicing football. And you're only gonna be good in the passing game in particular by getting routes. And so I think that's the culture that they've built. Obviously Howie has done a great job kind of molding the team throughout the years, figuring out who his guys are gonna be and kind of really building the team around there. We've had a lot of success. It all stems from Mr. Lurie and his ability to kind of invest in this organization, invest in the players. And then Doug is just a coach that really, really gets it. He played in the league for a long time. He understands personalities. He understands when to push us. He understands kind of when to pull back. And he's a guy that's really easy to talk to. You know, there are time, there have been spells where it's like, I'm kind of down. He's the first person to say, hey, my door is always open. And so he'll just be able to have a one-on-one -on -one honest conversation with me. And he's not gonna beat around the bush. He's gonna tell me how it is. I always tell him, call me out if you see me being stupid or something. And so I love that relationship with Doug. He's one of the best coaches I've ever had and one of the first coaches that I really loved, loved playing for. What about your craziest Eagles fan story? I remember after I got to play on Monday night, going to Geno's and Pat's, that place was just going bananas. But <laughs> your favorite fan interaction moment? I mean, the favorite fan interaction moments in Philadelphia, obviously, were the Super Bowl parade. It was a day like no other days. It was just, you see the joy that the Super Bowl brought the city of Philadelphia. And that whole off season was, I feel like the joy level in Philadelphia is typically like a five out of 10, maybe. The Super Bowl, the year we won the Super Bowl was about a 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, maybe 11 out of 10. Yeah. And so you just see the joy that that brought them being able to experience the parade with them it was just a blast kelsey's outfit yeah kelsey's outfit kelsey's speech <laughs> you know he was like laying in bed for days thinking about that speech just making sure he hit everything what about your guys division because everybody's freaking out about the nfc east it's the worst division in football this that and the other the cowboys don't have a quarterback the giants look awful washington doesn't have a team name you hear it every day in sports media now that i work in it i'm like dang is it really that bad well i look at your guys as roster and I'm like, well, hold on now, because Ertz is going to get healthy. Goddard's back. Is Alshon out for the year? No, he'll be back. Deshaun's going to come back. I don't know. I just feel like you guys are trending in the right direction. And talk about the entire division. Where do you see you guys at? And does it align with what the media makes of the NFC East? I mean, obviously... To not be have a team above 500 isn't ideal at this point in the year. But at the same time, we're not really focused on what we can't control. We've lost a couple games that we probably felt like we should have won, tied a game that probably felt like we should have won. And every team in our division's probably had a couple games like that. And we've played two really tough divisions, the AFC North and the NFC West, two of the tougher divisions in football. And like you said, we battled a lot of injuries. The Cowboys have battled a lot of injuries. But I'm going to get healthy. I'm going to come back. Lane's going to get healthy. Dallas is starting to trend in the right direction playing last week. Miles Sanders is going to come back and so on offense we're definitely going to be trending up at the right time when we need to but we got a lot of tough football games coming up i think we play the cardinals
Cardinals, the Seahawks, the Saints, the Browns. We just got to be able to go out there. And even though our talent is kind of coming together, we got to go out there and win some football games because that's what this league is all about, wins and losses. We just got to go find a way to win football games. And once you get in the playoffs, it doesn't matter what your record is. All you care about is winning that one football game and then having the ability to play one more. And the year we went to the Super Bowl, we were the number one seed. The first game against the Falcons, first time a number one seed was the underdog in the playoff game. We won that game. And then we just had to win one more at home against the Vikings, won that one, and then won again in the Super Bowl. So all you got to do is get into the playoffs. Once you're there, no one is asking questions.